Hello friends, I'm Randy Eager with Strategic Storm Internet Marketing. We build and market your website strategies so that you don't have to. Welcome to today's webinar, Need for Feeds, RSS Feeds and Blog Marketing Skills webinar. This webinar is geared around to optimizing blog sites and RSS feeds. If you want to know what's going on out there, in the crazy land of social media and how to get it in the game, stay tuned. We've got some great ideas for you. If you haven't had a chance to get the link to the handout, you can find it at strategicstorm.com slash handouts slash needfeeds.pdf. Or the easiest way to get it is to click on the link in the control box in the questions area. Finally, as you have questions as we go along, feel free to type them into the questions area of the control box and I'll answer as many as I can afterwards on a first in basis. Now based on the number of you attending today, as always, I doubt that there will be a way that I can get to all of you, but I'll try. So let's start out this way. Think about it. RSS feeds, or really simple syndications, are the best way of capturing your audience. Why? Because they get your prospects to subscribe to your content willingly and with interest. In order to mine this rich pool of gold, you'll need just a few things. Compelling websites. That's right, I said websites, plural. With multiple compelling features that we'll be talking about later that are implemented correctly in if you have all this, you'll get the gold mine, pure gold. What we're going to be talking about today then is how to mine the gold. So what you'll learn today is the message power of blogs. Blogs are becoming the more popular means of communicating on the Internet. Why? Because of their very nature, they're meant to be subscribed to and read on a regular basis. Thus, the search engines index them more frequently. Number two is podcasting delivery methods. Many people are now choosing to include in their blogs podcasting or the use of sound. This can be in the form of voice recording or even music with voice. Number three, video tools for multimedia power. One of the more exciting aspects of blogging has been the addition of video. With video, not only do you get to speak your mind about a topic, but your audience can see and get a feel for your passion. And number four, RSS feeds to tie it all together. Once you have your blogs composed and posted, you'll want to have your audience be able to subscribe to them. The more subscribers, the more impact you will have. Web 2.0 equals a two-way street. Most of you know that Web 2.0 has a decisive difference over the original Web 1.0, and that's why Web 2.0 was built as a two-way communications path, as opposed to the one-way path that was originally in place. Think of this as the difference between a telephone call and a billboard. Web 2.0 involves sharing, blogs, wikis, or online encyclopedias such as Wikipedia, and openness, user-generated content, and social networks. Now the blog is communication. Two of the more important aspects of blog communication are your blog site posting and your use of RSS feeds. We'll talk about each of these in detail. Blogs originally started out of just text. They were a log or journal that people would copy back and forth. Thus, we called them weblogs, and that got shortened to what is now referred to as simply the blog. 
Almost immediately after audio streaming was created as bandwidth permitted, video streaming came on the scene in the form of video blogging. Just as television took over the radio market, video blogging has taken over the podcast market. However, just as radio still has a place, so does podcasting as a marketing tool. From the creation of streaming video, we started sharing our video over mass servers like YouTube and Rever. While you may have a well-known blog site, it's not nearly as well-known as YouTube as a shared video source. We'll be talking more about this later as well. And finally, with all this multimedia going on, there needed to be a way to capture or subscribe to just the media that you wanted. So RSS feeds came along as subscription services to allow people to focus on just the information which they wanted to stay abreast. Blog sites are taking over traditional websites for one major reason. Immediacy. So quickly, what is a blog? Let's start with this question. Blogs are, first of all, taking over. They're updated instantly and easily from anywhere in the world, and they're rich in multimedia content. In other words, not only can you put in text, but you can now put in sound, photos, and video. There are places for ideas and conversations. One of the best things about blogs is the conversational aspect of them. You can actually do polling yourself for any questions or controversial topics, and blogging gives you a voice. It's so nice, not only to be able to announce things over the Internet, but to also get feedback as well as the areas that you'd like to get feedback on. Now, the two major backbones, if you will, to build a blog site are WordPress, which is really the largest and best one, and the other one is very simple to use. It's Google's Blogger. Both are free, and if you'd like to know more about these, just go to WordPress.com or Blogger.com. I like this cartoon as a way of expressing how far along we've come and how far our kids have come. And the husband, or the dad, is asking the little six-year-old there, well, yes, we could read your blog, or could you just tell us about your school day? <laughs> I think a lot of us can relate to that cartoon. Well, what else is a blog? Here's a blog in brief. It's short for a weblog, as we mentioned. It's an online journal, frequently updated, general consumption, conversations, dialogue, gaining feedback, and it's used to strengthen relationships. Now let's take a look at blog attributes. Blogs can use formats of text, audio, which we call podcasts, video, which we call vlogs or video blogs, and shared collaboration, which we call wikis. They are still textual in nature, which makes them highly visible to the major search engines. Now, podcasts add a more interesting element of sound to the blog and can be done as an interview with two or more people. Any video camera can record video for use in a blog. Most cameras now will capture the video to disk to make it easier to capture to both hard drive as well as the internet. And many wikis, such as Wikipedia, are now used to give more information and can even be created by anyone who cares to share information. For that matter, you can even put your own biography on Wikipedia to tell the world who you are and what you do. As I mentioned before, the RSS feed is used to subscribe to the particular information and format that you want, and we'll get more into this later. 
So blogs, why should I care? Why should you care about blogs? You want to increase search engine visibility for whatever the message is you want to deliver. Because blogs are so rich in content and read and re-indexed so often, you can find your blog site and website improved in rankings because of your blog posts. So don't be naive. You want to be found. First of all, let's take a look at a very nice professional site that has all the bells and whistles that you would want to have on a website. The only problem is, it's not a website. No, this is actually a blog site. In fact, it's a WordPress blog site. With the advent of the laser widgets and add-ons in the blogosphere, blog sites are now taking on their own presence. Here's another beautifully done blog site. Many people are now abandoning their websites for blog sites. Why? Well, aside from the fact that you can now do almost everything on a blog site as you can on a website, in fact, you can do everything and more as you can on a website, blog sites have one distinct advantage. While websites are indexed by the search engines on the average every two to three months, blog sites are content rich and therefore get re-indexed by the search engines every two to three hours. <laughs> That's a big difference. So blogs and what their potential is. Overall, the blog has many features and tools. It has almost unlimited potentials. Consider it like a Swiss army knife with several features each to be used for different purpose. For example, you can do your own market research using your blog site. Once you establish an audience for your blog, posting questions can be your most effective way of gaining more exposure. Those who are interested in the results of your research will stick around, as well as those who want to find out what the findings are. There are very simple widgets that you can do that will run these polls for you. So we have conversations and market research. Now let's talk about authority. Authority is how much weight or credence is given to your blog site. If you have no one following you, you have very low authority. On the other hand, if you have many people following you, you gain an authority. And with authority comes more readership as your rankings go higher in the search engines. And speaking of search engines, SEO. The one aspect of the blog site is its incredible SEO power. Remember about how much faster that I said a blog site is re-indexed by the search engines? Now if you attach a link to your website, it now gets re-indexed along with your blog site. This pushes your website and blog site up higher in the search rankings. I've had some of my clients that have their search engine rankings five times higher than their average website. PR. Your blog site is a natural tool for online press releases. Use this every so often to make announcements about your locale, market, interest rates, and so forth. This makes you the authority of your market and one whose site people will gravitate. Networking. As we've mentioned, your blog site is a conversational tool as well, as well as a great networking tool. And overall, your blog site is a great conversational tool. Okay, let's take a look at what is a podcast. First of all, the nomenclature is fairly well known by now. The word podcast comes from two words, iPod and broadcast. Thus, we get the word podcast. Of course, if you're going to record a podcast, the first thing that you're going to need is a microphone.
<laughs> These don't need to be fancy, but can be picked up at Radio Shack for $10 or more. The microphone should have an RCA jack that can plug into your computer so that you can record directly into your computer. Now let's say that you are doing an interview. Maybe you're going to interview the head of your realtor association about market conditions in your area. You're going to also need what's called a duplexer that both RCA jacks can plug into so that again only one jack gets plugged into your computer. The next thing that you're going to need is recording software. Don't even worry about buying this as there's plenty of it on the internet for free. This particular software is very popular. It's called Audacity. You can simply Google it by Googling Audacity Download. And, of course, what you'll also need is a program you might not recognize for real estate use. Well, nowadays, many people are actually recording their own podcasts, putting them on iTunes and selling them for 99 cents apiece. Remember that interview that I had with the head of the Realtor Association? It could be quite valuable to others as a download from iTunes. You should definitely get approval from anyone you interview if you plan on replicating or selling the recording. Now here's another idea. Here we see a blog site that is almost totally focused on podcasts of other agents and how they survived real estate in 2010. Note how each week there's a different person who is showcased. When doing these, always give at least a week's notice for who will be on the show next. YouTube and photo sharing are the fastest growing applications. You must be able to conquer these or be conquered. What are video blogs? Okay, let's have some fun now. Just as television swept past radio, video has swept past podcasts in a real hurry. Video blogs are video files that have been modified into a format that can be played on websites, blog sites, or even just landing pages. To play a video, you either need a video and a player, just like you would need a record and a record player for those old buggers out there, or you can simply use YouTube, which has its own video player built right in. Wikipedia's definition of a video blog. A video blog is a blog which uses video as the primary content. Pretty simple, huh? Now how to create a video blog. Number one, lay out your video shoot with a clear thought process. Before you get started, know what you want to do and how you want to do it. Number two, Shoot your video with several slow pans and multiple angles. Too many times when agents use a video camera, they pan too quickly, resulting in shaky and hard to view videos. Always pan slower than you think is normal. Post your video to YouTube or other social networks. Once you have shot your video, it's easy to upload the video file to YouTube or other social networking sites. Many agents create their own flash file and circumvent the use of YouTube. The value of YouTube, however, is in the huge marketing potential. And number four, embed video into your website or blog. Don't forget that one of the best uses of your video will be to embed it into your website or blog site. Embedding videos into websites and blog sites is becoming as common as uploading listings onto the MLS. Making video using video editing software. <laughs> 
One thing about video editing software is that it's either free or, for the most part, very inexpensive. In fact, Windows itself comes with a program called Windows Movie Maker. That's a part of the operating system. Now, my preference, however, is to spend just a little bit to make a much bigger impact. For example, Vegas Movie Studio, which I'm showing you here, is a video editing software that I use and it's only $54.95 on the internet to purchase. So why go to all the trouble of getting video editing software? Well, here's just a couple of reasons. Number one, build home tours with voiceovers, either your voice or someone else's. Use as pre-open house tools. Simply upload the video walkthrough onto your blog site and then post the URL in your open house newspaper ad or website ad. How about this one? Create marketing tools for sellers. When done right, the video walkthrough can include a musical introduction, the video of the home, neighborhood, your voiceover explaining various features and even background music. You can then either put this on your blog site or copy onto a CD for the seller to use. Now get creative and use it for marketing purposes on Facebook, Twitter, and your other social media marketing sites. Send links out to out-of-town buyers. One of the most frustrating things for agents is to show an out-of-town buyer homes for an entire week only to have the perfect home come up for sale the day after they leave town. No longer is this a problem as you can email them a link of your video walkthrough. And share video with video sharing services such as YouTube. Placing your video walkthrough on YouTube places your marketing worldwide and it's amazing how viral these can be. Visual tours have been around about as long as any virtual tour software. It's morphed from just a static shot software that created panoramas by stitching multiple photos together to include full video and YouTube inclusive into this product. For home buyers, using this software saves hours of time trying to track down photos, maps, flyers, and contact information for houses for sale that show minimal information online or just a few lines of text in the newspaper. They're popular because the real estate agent who markets these visual tours included captivating information such as scrolling panoramic scenes, descriptive text, and numerous photos along with easy to use tools to locate the home on a map and contact the agent when you're ready to do so. All of those things come with this software program visualtours.com. Now here's another one. Tour Factory Tour Factory is another well-known virtual tour software that creates creative pans with static shots of the property as well as a slideshow approach to the virtual tour. The biggest benefit to both of these programs is ease of use. Breathing life into your listing. Do you wish you could show the home as you would in person? If only you could show that water feature moving. If only you could show the waves crashing on the beach. Now you can with full motion video from Tour Factory. Be as creative as you want and blow away your sellers, buyers, and the competition. Just imagine opening the door to your listing and guiding potential buyers through every amenity. It's so much easier to visualize a home when you're walking through it. You're not just showing people to a piece of property, you're taking the opportunity to use your unique knowledge and fantastic personality to gain their trust. Who knows, you just might develop a following. 
video tours are now replacing the virtual tour. The reason is simple. Full multimedia. Much of our business here at Strategic Storm comes from the optimized use of our YouTube videos. Here I'm caught in the middle of teaching a class on technology. This and a brief testimonial of the students that attended have been created as one video clip. You can do the same with each of your individual listings. There's no difference. Many agents are also now taking advantage of video on their blog sites. Once placed on a blog site, these can be changed, modified, or added to. Here we see an agent who has placed a video on his site to introduce his visitors to his location. What you can do with this variety of video is limitless. Create testimonials from buyers and or sellers. Create video walkthroughs, neighborhood walkthroughs, and so forth. Uploading video to YouTube. Now for those of you who haven't ever uploaded a video to YouTube, the steps are quite simple. And for those of you who have, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Don't worry about following along as your handout will include all these steps. Number one, click either sign up or sign in if you already have an account. Number two, click on upload, then upload your video. Number three, navigate to the video that you want to navigate and click open. Number four, Type in mandatory fields such as title, description, video category, tags, and keywords. Number five, click Save Changes. That is so crucial because nothing gets saved until you click on Save Changes. Number six, click Go to My Videos. Now, here's what's interesting. It will go to your videos, but Nothing will show or play until and unless the video is rendered, which means that it takes a while for YouTube to completely take that entire video, upload it, and make it ready for you to play. Here's a testimonial that we received from John Riggins about our services. While it wasn't in writing, I'd like to share with you the power of the video over the written word. First of all, I'll tell you that these are the exact words that John used to describe our services. I tell you this because I'm now going to play the video and I think that you'll see that even without sound, you'll get the impact of his written word. Again, you won't be able to hear the sound nor see the video due to the limitations of the GoToWebinar service, but see if this makes any difference with titles and subtitles. One of the best things that you can do for yourself is to create video testimonials on your blog site. Just ask any of your buyers and or sellers if you could do an interview with them about how they felt about your services. You'll be amazed what people will say when you put a camera in their face. Here is a video testimonial that I put on our blog site of John Riggins, and you see it there. Uh, Randy, I've known you for years. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for you. Uh, I knew very little about technology and that sort of thing when I first started out. I did have my first website in 1994, but uh, you have helped me so much that all I can say is that I depend on you to advise me of what I need to do. I'm not the expert, so that's what I do. And as a result of it, we've been very successful. Social marketing is the new in way of marketing your listings. Rather than advertising, it is conversation. So, what are RSS feeds. Now that we know how to use blog sites to their best advantage, it's time to take a look at RSS feeds. First of all, 
what does the acronym RSS feed stand for? Well, it's been changed over the years, but the most commonly used term today is really simple syndication. The key word here is syndication or subscription. As we'll see in just a moment, RSS feeds are nothing more than a to subscribe to or syndicate your information. Here we have Realtown. This is a popular real estate forum where agents can communicate and share thoughts and ideas. Note that there are areas for articles from experts in the field, groups who have common concerns, and general community for expression of ideas, blogs, associations, education, and even a store for purchasing real estate related goods. Need a tip or an idea solved? Forums are a great place to go to ask the group your question. Again, RSS is really simple syndication and is a web feed format used to publish frequently updated content. RSS allows you to pull content from many different sources. Think of RSS feeds like this. Let's say that you're interested in subscribing to a newspaper, so you go down to the corner and see that there is a very large choice. So you choose one and decide to subscribe to it. What happens? Well, each morning you find delivered to your lawn the subscription of that particular paper for your reading pleasure. Now, let's say that as you sift through the paper each day, you find that you have just one area, or let maybe say two areas, that you really enjoy reading, the living and the real estate sections. So you call up the paper and tell them that you'd like to cancel your subscription and you'd like to only subscribe to the living and real estate sections. Think that they're going to laugh at you? Well, not at all. You simply subscribe via RSS feed. Note that these are only a partial list of the various sections of the New York Times, but here at the bottom is the real estate section. Now every morning or night you can get the latest real estate stories even before they're printed for those who take the normal subscription. And here's the same thing with the Wall Street Journal. Nearly every newspaper and magazine around the country has subscription services to their publications via RSS feeds. Now here's an atypical yet productive blog site. Barbara has been involved in several successful websites and blog sites for many years. She understands that if you're going to have a successful blog site, it better have compelling content on it. And if it does, it then better have an RSS feed for people to subscribe. Note how she also is very much in your face with this so people don't miss where they can subscribe to Barbara's blog. What are RSS feeds? RSS feeds are a simple format which enables websites or blog sites to tell you when they have new content. That is why it's pull technology. Instead of visiting your favorite sites to find out if they've been updated, you simply subscribe to them and let them come to you and let them tell you when they've been updated. And unlike an email service, it's completely private. The sites you subscribe to know nothing about you and you can unsubscribe at any time. Now let's take a look at how RSS feeds actually work. Let's start with the client. They see a blog site that they'd like to subscribe to. So, they click on the RSS feed symbol and accept the subscription. Now the web request is made and your subscription is accepted. Now, note that you haven't had to tell 
where you want the subscription sent, when you want it sent, or how you want it sent. By the symbol that you click on, it automatically knows which aggregator you're using. Now let's move on to see what happens next. When the person whose site you subscribe to creates a new post, you'll be notified. If you're using Internet Explorer, which is the most basic RSS feed aggregator, you'll see the Feeds tab bold in the subscriptions area for that content. Note that this is not an email that notifies you, but rather just a quick notification that the RSS feed that you've subscribed to has changed. When you're ready to see that information, you simply click on the Feed Aggregator button and up pops the new post for you to read. Keep in mind that you're totally anonymous to the website, as your subscribers will be to you. So anytime you wish to unsubscribe, no problem. Let's take another look at what I've called this aggregator situation. RSS feed aggregators come in all variations from online to software that you install on your hard drive. Aside from Internet Explorer itself, some of the more popular feed readers are Google Reader, Bloglines, NetVibes, NewsGator, Feed Reader, and <laughs> there's a whole bunch of other ones. Note here, though, that all of them will read your projects, calendar, searches, books, messages, news, portals, websites, and blogs. Now have your, your clients subscribe to you. What we've just looked at is subscribing to others' blog sites and websites. So why not have it in reverse? What we've just looked at then is subscribing to others. Why not have others subscribe to you? If you have a blog site that has good content that others would like to subscribe to, they will do what you just did. They'll click on your RSS feed logo and subscribe to your blog site so that they can read your posts. Remember, the more people you have that subscribe to your blog, the more influence you have. Will you be able to tell how many people you subscribe that subscribe to your blog? Well, not really. You'll get your best idea if you have followers, if you're getting people commenting on your posts. Practical real estate usage with blogs. So here's a list of practical ways to use your blog site. Comments on your geographical farm. Notes on the location in which you live. Describe upcoming events of interest. Detail interest rate movements. Announce homes that have sold or have been listed. Introduce new neighborhoods of interest. And showcase headlines pertaining to real estate. How about podcasts? How can you best utilize them? How about a description of your latest listing? Give ideas on pricing your home to sell. Or how about tips on buying real estate? Interviews of local authorities and interviews of local celebrities. Latest statistics and or economic forecasts and testimonials of satisfied buyers and sellers. And how about your RSS feeds? What about them? How can you use them best? The list of your blogs and archives is an excellent way to use these, as we've just mentioned. The list of your podcasts and archives, NAR RSS feeds, and other website feeds of interest. Inman News has many RSS feeds that you can look at as well. So this comprises many, many places that you can utilize your RSS feeds. Everyone wants to get the checkered flag. Everyone wants to win. 
we all want to make as much money as we can with our internet strategies. Who is it that takes the checkered flag? It's always the fastest car over the most laps. I often get frustrations from agents who say that while they may have blog sites, RSS feeds, and social media, that they're not making any money from them. My friends, that's like saying, I also have a Honda, but I haven't come close to winning any races, let alone the Indy 500. Blog sites, RSS feeds, and social media can be passive income for you, but if you want to make the big income, just like the race car drivers, you'll need to have a pit crew working for you. And outsourcing. With a pit crew and an optimized Formula One race car, this year, the winner won over $2.7 million. Did you outsource any of this work for you? If not, how much did you make on your Honda? Here's some things to think about. Can you send tagged new listing announcements to all yours and your seller's friends? Do you have your own blog site with personalized and optimized posts placed on it every month? Can you show your homes for sale right from your Facebook account? Can you do a video walkthrough from within your Facebook account? And can you search the MLS from your social media Facebook account? Do you have all your listings on your YouTube as a playlist account that can be seen as a group? And does your Twitter site have a personalized background and can you synchronize tweets straight to Facebook? Does your Twitter site have a personalized background and can you synchronize tweets straight to your Facebook from your Twitter account? Internet marketing has been left to the elite. Top agents understand the two facets of Internet marketing. First, they have optimized websites, making them visible to their prospects on Google. Second, they have compelling websites that make the prospect want to stay and give their information. The vast majority of these agents use the gold SEO plan. It puts their website at the top of Google. And just some of the features in the Gold SEO plan are blog site creation and optimization, social bookmarking site submissions, competitor research analysis, link building, plus 15 more optimization features. For years, this has been our most popular SEO plan at $35.95, but it's yours for a limited time if you mention this video for only $19.95. But that's not all. Here's another idea. Allow me to introduce the Power Site, the feature perfect website, the first website to put the power of a 10 year study finding the 20 most compelling website features to get you leads leading to sales. The Power Site is the most feature rich, compelling website on the market today. Some of the features in the Power Site include the gold SEO plan. That alone is a $3,600 value. A professional rotating feature property slideshow. Subscribe to new listings or the new listing alerts. Video trailer inserts plus 16 more compelling features. And because it includes the gold SEO plan, it's our best value. And all of this for only $19.95. Call us today and ask to see available live sites and testimonials. For more information and to order, call 800-277-1316. Use your smartphone to click on the QR barcode shown or order online at OurPowerSites.com. 
Use your credit card to secure these special offers. Don't delay. Call 800-277-1316 now. Plus, if you call today, not only can you get these special prices, but you can also get our bundled pricing for both products for only $29.95. This limited time offer will only be available for those who mentioned this video offer. Remember the words of Theodore Roosevelt. In any moment of decision, the best thing that you can do is the right thing. The next best thing is the wrong thing. And the worst thing that you can do is nothing. Well, the decision is yours to make. We hope to hear from you. And have a great day.